something we'll talk about. Um, I wanted to cover this though, because we were talking about the press Oops. and, uh, Dana Bash, someone who just seems sort of banal and almost anodyne, but who, if you've been paying attention, as most of the viewers of this show have been, of the of our live stream have been, people who follow the gray zone, she's been one of the most virulently aggressive Zionist propagandists after October 7th. And she was protested doing on uh, at, at, I guess, politics and prose in Washington, D.C. After World War II, every single journalist that was complicit in their war crime was charged. You belong behind bars. You belong behind bars. We know who you are. We know what you're saying. It's not a war. It's never been a war. It is ethnic cleansing. It is genocide. There are children getting bombed, 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 bombed after You are complicit Bloody bash. Dana Fash. And I thought that that woman was very brave for doing that and uh, spoke for all of us here. I mean, just uh, when you look at the videos that I saw in the last day coming out of Gaza, when you see the children, it's like, yeah, you understand why she's shouting. Yeah, because Dana Bash, after October 7th, remember we were watching... Uh, I, I actually have the clip somewhere, but it's not worth playing. We'll play some of the more odious Dana Bash lowlights. But Dana Bash was uh, commenting, I think on October 15th, when CNN was really cranking up the propaganda, Israel was about to start the ground invasion. And Wolf Blitzer just interviewed Isaac Herzog, the Israeli president, who said, this is a battle between good and evil. And then Wolf Blitzer, former APAC employee, tossed to Dana Bash. And Dana Bash said, yeah, you know, Wolf, uh, I, the president of Israel is really right. This is a battle between good and evil. I mean, it was that level of salespersonship of genocide that we were getting from her. And then when Pramila Jayapal from the Progressive Caucus, Caucus attempted to call for a ceasefire, here's how Dana Bash pushed back. 15,000 Palestinians have been killed in Israeli airstrikes, three quarters of whom and it's, are women and children. And it's horrible, but you're not going to see Israeli soldiers raping um Well, Dana, I think women. we're not. Yeah, we just, I mean, that, that, clip, what? that it's that, horrible that they're killing them, but at least they're not raping them. So it's okay. They're, they're killing them and then dressing up in their lingerie in their homes after they slaughter an entire family. Like what? I mean, she doesn't hide her bias. So Dana, yeah, she and Jake Tapper, I think, win the prize for manufacturing consent. Wolf is kind of just like a robot. He just like says his stuff. But Dana Bash is so passionately Zionist. It's yeah. yeah, I mean, she deserves whenever she's in public to be questioned that way. I don't really condone protesting her at her house because I just think that's pointless. But uh, she, she couldn't look that woman in the eye and was just trying to like make her out to be overly emotional when, yeah, at this point, after watching so many videos of dead kids, people are emotional, Dana. And that's why you can see in that comment, why they came up with the Hamas rape hoax is so they could come up with ways to justify slaughtering so many people that that's the main goal of the Hamas rape scam. Cause of course what she said there, it, I mean, even if it were true that Palestinians were raping Israelis, it would still be a horrible statement to, to yeah. say anything that can justify slaughtering Palestinian yeah. civilians. But of course, it's not even true. I mean, she was citing a complete hoax. I mean, um, it doesn't just, make we sense. Can't, we can't stress that 
and we can't stress, we can't stress that enough. And unfortunately, uh, Pramila Jayapal didn't push back on that because, you know, this is how atrocity propaganda works. Like, there's a certain claim made; it's used for cynical aims to justify mass murder or a U.S. intervention, whatever it is. And it's just if you challenge it, you get accused of being an apologist, a denier, all these things. But it's too bad that Pramila Jayapal didn't call it out as a scam and didn't actually call out Dan Abash for that comment because it's so sickening. And it's just like, uh, you know, accusing someone of being a Holocaust denier or an anti-Semite. It just takes off the table any argument that they might be making. Exactly. Uh, and that's what Jake Tapper did about his fellow Zionist propagandist. These protesters target Dana at her home and this event because she's Jewish. This is according to Jake Tapper of CNN. There's nothing about her coverage of the Israel-Hamas war that is different from most other news coverage covering both Jewish, Israeli, and Palestinian pain. This harassment is anti-Semitism. Um, she's just being targeted because she's Jewish. I mean, what did the woman say? She was saying, you, Dana Bash! are really named Dana Schwartz. And you simply took the name of your first husband, Jeremy Bash, former chief of staff to the CIA and Pentagon. And you had a bat mitzvah and you celebrate Passover, Dana Bash. And you go to synagogue on Yom Kippur. Like that, it wasn't like saying anything. There was, it was all about Dana Bash's commentary on the record, cheerleading for Israel's genocide. And of course, Jake Tapper, is an even more invidious propagandist for Israel's genocide. Um, and I, you know, I went after him for it, it was just infuriated me to see him try to just hide behind anti-Semitism. I said, I said to Jake Tapper, you and Dana don't get to hide behind anti-Semitism here. You each played a seminal role in marketing Israel's genocide to Americans after October 7, pushing every atrocity hoax you could. When the Gaza Holocaust Museum is constructed, there will be a special ex exhibition about cynical Zionist propagandists like you and Dana Fash. Jake Tapper's name is still on the byline of a CNN report claiming Al Shifa Hospital sat atop a massive terror command and control center. His fake report was sourced to one anonymous U.S. official, and it appeared hours before Israeli occupation forces stormed Al Shifa, kidnapping doctors and hauling them to torture centers. The director of Al Shifa Hospital is tortured and forced to eat dog feces in the state Teman concentration camp. No command and control center was found, and he's never apologized or attracted the report. He manufactured consent for the destruction of Gaza's entire public health system. He gave an uncritical platform to the lies of United Hatzalah the extremist group of ultra-Orthodox grifters that fabricated atrocities about babies being baked in ovens and mutilated children on October 7th. They've been discredited even in Israeli media. United Hatzalah has even issued statements de uh, uh, disowning the lies that their own volunteers told, including to Jake Tapper. Jake Tapper led a special report on the mass rape hoax of October 7th, which was spun out by the Israeli government. And we exposed his sources as frauds. Mondo Weiss tore Jake Tapper's report to shreds and showed how so many of his sources are deeply connected and involved with the Israeli government. He's never acknowledged any of the debunking or responded to it. And then the sickest thing Jake Tapper did was a seven minute long tirade explicitly justifying, I can play part of it, um, but I think we should move on, explicitly justifying Israel's operation in Gaza, attacking protesters calling for a ceasefire and addressing all Palestinians in the Gaza Strip in closing with the, with the statement, what did you expect? As though they should expect genocide and ethnic cleansing and that babies and children should expect to be slaughtered because of October 7th. That was Jake Tapper's logic expressed there. He's praised widely in Israeli media. Um, he was even interviewed on Israeli media and presented as a hero back in uh, December. So Jake Tapper's no judge of what's objective on the war on Gaza or Israel-Palestine. And it's disgusting that he would even try. Yeah, I mean, the one thing that I would say to Jake Tapper, if he if he, he's claiming that that woman is only protesting Dana Bash because she's Jewish, but even though, as you say, she didn't make it at all about that. 
I would yeah. ask Jake Tapper if the perpetrators of these crimes weren't Jewish or if he weren't Jewish, what would he have to say right now? Because he clearly is only like defend if it was sort of like uh, Assad in Syria, he'd be calling for regime change. Well, he did. And in, in his one of his final broadcasts in the Obama era, he was asked what Obama did wrong. And he said Obama failed to bomb Syria in response to all of these gas attacks. So, yeah, he, Jake Tapper's for every war that the U.S. and its proxies wage. And I mean, this was, Aaron, do you remember this event at the 92nd Street Y? I don't actually, but those are two lovely faces uh, <laughs> who both certainly belong together. Yeah. Me, yeah. At the time, me and Katie Halper were going to do like a kind of mystery science theater commentary, like live commentary of this event because it was live streamed, but we just never got around to it. It would have been really funny. It's pretty forgotten. I mean, Jake Tapper is fully aligned with the neocon camp. And this was an event on anti-Semitism where they- Oh, just, yeah, right. Uh, Jer Jerry Seinfeld was in attendance. I remember this. Yep. Yeah. 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 Cl another clear victim of anti-Semitism. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how yeah. long did his show run on US TV? What, what's so, um, you know, and then going back to Jake Tapper's statement, he talks about like, even the claim about covering Palestinian and Israeli pain. Yeah, of course, implies there's some parity between the two, which is so insulting in itself. Um, this like notion that like, you know, 1,200 Israelis were killed on October 7th. We don't know how many were by their own government, but putting that aside, uh, and then you compare that to, we, we don't even know the toll of Palestinians killed by Israel since then, uh, but certainly the official toll is a massive undercount, a society entirely destroyed, and he has the gall to basically suggest there's some sort of parity. And of course, um, he says that they've covered the pain uh, equally. I mean, even putting like that aside, the, his attempt to establish parity, he, as you talked about, he's promoted lies that have been carefully designed to maximize Palestinian pain. The Al-Shifa hospital lie, the Hamas rape hoax. So he's been actively involved in being a propagandist, not just to inflict Palestinian pain, but Palest cause Palestinian mass death. Yeah. Yep. Well, they're, and, they're, they'll, they'll one day, you know, I think the dust will settle and they'll be on the wrong side of history. Everybody will see it and CNN probably won't be around, like I said. So. <laughs>